Hey folks, Mike Lieberman and Eric Kalis on the horizon. It is Tuesday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. I hope everyone has some uh, fun plans scheduled for their homes and uh, lockdown condition for later this afternoon. I know I'll have a Corona or tequila and or both at the end of the day. So uh, hope everyone can enjoy their day. So today I thought we would do something a little different uh, I want to break the, is it the fourth wall, third wall? I want to show you guys a little bit about how we do the show. Uh, obviously, when Eric and I think about what we're going to do for the show, we're trying to come up with some interesting content. And since we're all kind of home, trying to do stuff like this at home, we thought it would be cool to talk a little bit about how we do it. So before Eric starts with some comments, I want to give you an idea what we're going to try to do today. I'm gonna give you a little insight into how we decided to set the show up like this, how we use Zoom, how we configure Zoom, how we live stream it on Facebook, a little bit of the background on how we kind of set the show up technically. Then Eric's gonna show you a little bit about his, his room and how he set up where he's filming. And I'll do a little bit of the behind the scenes of what I have set up here. And then at the very end, we'll talk a little bit about how we do some post promotion with the show. And I'll show, show you actually some images of our website and how we promote the show and our YouTube channel, which I recently updated to promote the show as well. And then we'll wrap up and get you guys on your way. So Eric, uh, take us out. Yeah. So if you guys remember, the whole premise of our show is on the horizon, good things that are coming when we're um, out of the woods with the coronavirus. So one of those things is communicating in a digital way with your prospective clients and current clients very hard, especially in the short term, to go meet someone for a coffee or play around a golf as we traditionally used to do. So we have to lean on other tools. The number one tool is going to be video. I've actually noticed when I've been on calls with prospects and clients over the last couple of weeks, people are more apt to turn on their cameras. People are more apt to put on a um, uh, shirt and not pajamas. Uh, people are more apt to uh, comb their hair and set up the backgrounds. Uh, some people are having fun with the uh, uh, unusual backgrounds, which is always great. But there's definitely this movement towards using video in business communication. This is not going away. If anything, this is the time to lean in on that because your competition is still fumbling around where you guys are already planning your strategy on how to communicate. Now, we have a little bit of an advantage because as a distributed or remote workforce, we've already leaned into tools like uh, WebEx, GoToMeeting, and Zoom over the last 10 years. Zoom became the easiest to use, the most affordable, and uh, we use some of the other features as well internally, like the chat feature, which is similar to a Slack channel. Rather than having Slack and Zoom, we just use the Zoom uh, uh, chat feature internally. It saves on a lot of emails and so forth. But that, um, uh, uh, serendipitous move to a remote made us able to do videos a little easier to conduct uh, digital meetings to bring in remote team members when necessary without too much hassle. Some uh, companies that haven't really taken advantage of video or video conferencing should really put their foot on the accelerator to cut the learning curve and make it part of your daily operating procedure. Even Thursdays at 4.30, our team gets together, everybody has a beer or a cocktail in hand if needed, and we have a little happy hour where we just talk about nothing besides fun stuff, life, and so forth. Well, of course, it's a lot more fun, but we've been doing it via video uh, uh, for years. Uh, secondarily, team communication that we talked about yesterday via email is also facilitated through a once-a-week uh, television show that we have called What's New Square 2, noon on Fridays, which takes care of your West Coast folks as well. Um, everybody has lunch or breakfast, depending on where you are. We do 45 minutes with some good content, screen sharing, and so forth. These tools are exactly what we envision business being like when we come out of the other end of this tunnel. And that's where we're hoping to encourage you to do the hard work necessary to transition from traditional communication to sprinkle in video and video conferencing into your communication. Back to you, Mike. Yeah, so when we first started talking about this, there was some fairly robust conversation about how to set this up. And, you know, we were talking about, well, do we just have a Zoom meeting and invite everybody? Um, since all of you guys registered, you, I mean, since all you guys are here, you know that there was no registration, there was no form. We decided pretty early to make it like as, as open as available to as many people as possible, to make it as frictionless as possible. We obviously could have asked all you guys to register prior to getting the link, we felt like it would be, we bet, would be better just to have it generally available to the public with a simple add it to your calendar option um, 
on the website and then some of the links that we sent out to promote it. So um, since we're going to make it open like that, and since we really didn't know how many people would come, we didn't know who would come when we first started doing it, Zoom's webinar option gave us some controls that I think are important to talk a little bit about. You guys have probably heard about people's meetings getting Zoom bombed and people hacking into Zoom meetings and, and hijacking Zoom meetings. So we felt like the webinar format on Zoom would give us a little more control over it. We actually, Eric and I actually talked about potentially making this more of a Q&A type format where it would be a little more open-ended with you guys participating live a little bit more. Upon further reflection, we seem like it might be better in the short time window that we're operating in to deal with your questions via chat and have us really focus on getting our 20 minutes of content out to you guys and then moving you on to your day. Eric and I may actually do a more interactive session towards the end of On the Horizon just to give you guys a chance to talk to us more openly, but that's something we're, we've been talking about. So Zoom webinar feature gave us all the controls we needed. Um, I actually log on. Uh, it's interesting, like when we first started this, I was logging on really early because I was concerned about getting everything set up properly. I now log on about 10, eight to 10 minutes before the show and I sign into Zoom. I find my pre-set up session in the webinars category in Zoom and I simply start the meeting. Now, what I also learned was that when you start a webinar, it starts recording immediately. So if you don't want to hear all the behind the scenes conversations, which I don't really want you to have, you know, 10 minutes of pre pre meeting stuff in your recording, I pause the recording quickly. Eric and I talk a little bit, make sure we're on the same page. If you do log on early, you probably get to hear some of our pre show talk, uh, but that's not recording. Um, I also spend a couple of minutes and this is what's nice about zoom is they have some live streaming features. So we live stream to Facebook. You can live stream to YouTube. Uh, there are a couple of live streaming features that it's relatively easy to set up in Zoom. I simply go to the live stream uh, uh, menu. I select Facebook and there's a Facebook to Zoom integration that then launches, puts me into Facebook and I set up the live session in Facebook. Again, it takes me a couple of minutes. Um, a, a pro user tip is I've noticed that if you're leaving that Facebook live window open too long, Facebook kicks you out and makes you start again. So again, one of the reasons I log in later now is to set up that Facebook live meeting and then just turn it on and it's only on for a couple of minutes before our meeting kicks off. So um, as soon as we're done, Zoom emails me an audio transcription, which is nice, but they also email me a link to get the recording. So Zoom takes care of recording it on the cloud. They send it to me. I pick the view that I want to download, which I like this gallery view of Eric and me next to each other talking. So I download that view and I, it comes right to my uh, laptop, which I can then use and I'll show you how I use it in some of the post show promotions um, a little later on. So it's actually super easy. It took us a couple of days to kind of get the kinks out of the setup and trying to figure that out, but it runs very smoothly now. Um, and uh, yeah, the um, someone's asking if there's a way to do the side-by-side -side format in Zoom. This is uh, the gallery view. Um, when you get that email from Zoom, it'll give you a number of options of what recording you want. And I picked the gallery recording and that gives me everyone, there's just two of us. If there were six of us, we'd see six pictures. So the gallery view gives you the perspective of whoever is on the meeting with you. So it's super easy to get from you. So that's literally it. And anyone could do this at home. It's very easy to do very easy to get the recordings, very easy to set it up. Obviously I share that, that intro slide on the horizon. So again, I share my screen for a minute, that's recorded also. I'm gonna share my screen at the end to show you how we promote the show. So you can share and get that into the recording as well. It's all very, very easy. So let's talk a little bit about how we set the shots up. So Eric, do you wanna give them a little bit of behind the scenes at 216 Market Street? Yeah, so um, I live in an apartment. My apartment is in Old City, Philadelphia, where it's standard to have a brick wall in every single <laughs> apartment. Um, brick wall, everybody looks good in front of a brick wall, so I selected that. Uh, lighting, uh, there's a window over here that I'm using for natural light, which is great, but on uh, sunny days and 
uh, cloudy days, you get different looks. So I always have this standard light in the background, which kind of neutralizes things. And then in other parts of my area, I have some spotlights on and other lights to fill in the background to give you a, as natural lighting as possible. Also, um, a good tip, a lot of people uh, tend to use their laptop like this, which is like a weird view. So by uh, getting a stand, or in my case, I'm using a small ottoman to shoot down on you, obviously is uh, 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 preferred. Also, you wanna get your perspective so that Mike and I's heads and bodies are somewhat similar because that could be distracting. If I was looking something like this and Mike was really zoomed in close, that would be distracting. So you try to just do those little uh, edits. Also, one of the things uh, that you'll find when you research video is that people will tolerate bad pictures way more, uh, way less than they'll tolerate bad sound. So what I've done is made sure that everything is off in my apartment, including the heating uh, elements. Uh, there's no music playing in the background. The windows are closed. So you don't hear like a fire engine going by. And sound is really important because uh, good sound trumps everything. Um, finally, uh, from a prep perspective, now that I have the set set up, I take about an hour once a week and research all of the show topics that we're doing. I say, cause I'm usually like the data and the six steps kind of person in the show. And then I take about 20 minutes before each session to review my notes, think about what's going on, block out on my calendar the 30 minutes leading up to the show so that I could be ready and present in the show and make sure that it's uh, our best effort put forward. So that's kind of what goes on from a technical perspective. From a financial perspective, uh, our Zoom subscription for our company, which has a couple of different components, averages about seven to $800 a month. And that includes webinar features where you could get up to 999 people on your webinar. It includes account for every single employee so that you're not jumping into each other's meetings and it's very organized. It includes four Zoom rooms, which are special rooms back in our office, which I guess are a little dusty right now, but where a big screen uh, TV and a small flat screen TV are working together, one for the content, one for the people's heads. You have a better sound system in those rooms, uh, an iPad that goes with it so that you could quickly start and record a meeting. Um, so all of that is for seven or $800 a month. If you think about the money you'll be saving on going to trade shows or travel and uh, travel expenses visiting clients, obviously it's a very modest fee, uh, for a company like ours, which is, you know, 35 to 40 employees. So think about an investment in some kind of tool, which will give you the control that you're looking for and not just a random free tool where you might have a little bit of challenge and it's not so professional. Yeah. We probably don't need those Zoom room subscriptions anymore. So oh, we, we, we spend them for a month or two. That's for right. Sure. Right. That was really good and really helpful. And two really important things that Eric talked about. A, he has all his lights on. Lighting is probably one of the most important features when you do something like this. And that really makes the, it kind of fills out the room. I have a whole different lighting scenario, so I'll show you that in a minute. And sound. We really have to be able to, people really have to be able to hear you. So I'm in a different situation. Um, I live in the suburbs of Philadelphia and there's two other people working here, my wife and my um, son. So I'm the third in the pecking order in terms of finding places to do what I need to do. So I'm in my basement. And what I did down here was, if you look right, I'm in reverse. If you look right over here, you see this tree here. I put this tree here strategically to cover a light that's in my ceiling that was providing some distractions in terms of the picture that I set up. But what I have going on here is I have a little bit of a like lighting setup here because it's a little darker here than Eric's situation. And I made this little kind of like set feature behind the sofa here just to make it a little more interesting. And Eric was right. Um, I have this very high tech Xbox box that I'm using for my laptop to get the height right. So, you know, those are all similar things that Eric talked about that you need to consider. And you can all test this out before you do anything. Just turn on Zoom, set it up, play around it. You know, like you move, you, you know, you try to find the right ratio in terms of where you want your computer. And like I showed you that ring light, that ring light is something we send to clients for them to do video. I actually have the kit that we use here that's open. We actually send some of this equipment to clients to help them do their own videos. So that ring light was something we had access to that I set that up. It was still a little too dark. I borrowed a lamp from one of my kid, old kids' bedrooms to put a little extra light down here uh, to really make it lit up appropriately. You'll notice that when your shots are not lit right, it tends to get fuzzy. That's the computer trying to adjust for lack of light. So you really want to make sure there's enough light uh, 
So those are really important, light, sound, and positioning, and make sure there's nothing distracting in the background if you're gonna do a setup like this. Mike, I have a special offer for our listeners and viewers today. What I did is I put together a uh, list of the must-haves and the nice-to-haves for doing home videos. If you just put your email address in the chat feature, I will email you a link to this so that you can have a guide that you could work from when assembling your equipment. The must-haves are only six on the list, but the nice-to-haves are about 20. So you can really go as modest or as expansive as you want when you're creating your home videos. That's awesome. Um, also, like I said, we have these kits that we send out to clients. So we've played around with these ring lights. We've played around with some of the microphones that now attach to your phones to do video. Um, that ring light comes with a, a holder for your iPhone. So when we do a lot of videos outside of the quarantine situation, that your phone goes right in the middle of that ring light. You have a, a lavalier mic that attaches to that and you're pretty set. Like obviously you get the lighting and the situ and the, the the picture design set up the way you want to. Um, you hit record on your phone, off you go. So uh, it's actually so much easier to do video um, than the way it used to be. So in the last couple of minutes, I'm gonna just show you what we do after the uh, show is over. So like I said, Zoom emails me a cloud recording of our uh, show. I download it to my laptop and then we go about producing the um, uh, the promotional stuff. The the uh, how we promote. While you're uh, doing that, Mike, I give you some quick stats. So we've been averaging between 20 and 40 live visitors that log on to the Zoom meeting every uh, day, and then we get somewhere between 100 to 150 additional views on Facebook Live. So while modest, you know, uh, these are people that we're trying to reach. Uh, we've done a little bit of promotion where we're sending out the link to the show to certain key people that might be influencers, um, but that's kind of the stats. And we're obviously concerned that we can reach as many people as possible. Right, so you should be able to see my screen now. So this is the On Horizon page that's on our website. So you see I'm leveraging the show as content for, the, for our website. So here's every show we did all of last week, and here's yesterday's show. Here are all the upcoming shows, and later today I'll post the video for episode 12, the Tuesday, May 5th show. So that's how we're kind of leveraging the content on our website uh, so we get some additional uh, traction with the show. And we also are, so I'm trying to like hop around now a lot. Uh, while Mike is doing that, think about it from an SEO perspective too when you're adding uh, these kinds of video content pieces to your website. Google is looking for fresh and relevant content. Well, if you post something every day that's fresh and relevant, we're talking about things like COVID-19 and marketing. Things are obviously very relevant. That helps the search engine optimization uh, results. Excellent point. So now you should be able to see our YouTube channel. So over the weekend, I went through our YouTube channel and posted all the episodes there. And you can see there's just a sh slew of videos on our YouTube channel. We've always been very into, into video. Eric actually used to do a video marketing minute, so there's many of those videos there, but we have case studies and all kinds of content on our YouTube channel. I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys optimize your YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube is the second most popular search engine behind what? Google. Uh, so people are going to YouTube, they are running searches, and you should really leverage as much video content on YouTube as you possibly can. So. Those are two ways we promote the show afterwards uh, and, and house the content and leverage the content afterwards. Obviously, if we ever needed any of that content, we could link to it, direct people there, uh, but we're trying to use the show assets as, as, as best we possibly can. In the last minute, Eric, anything you wanna wrap up with? Uh, no, I would just say that you know, video is a great way to communicate for your business simply because uh, Forty percent of Americans uh, self-identify as visual learners, meaning that they like to watch TV more than they like to read. So give people what they want and how they want to consume your content. A great two-minute video clip to a prospective client goes a long way versus a very long email that you wrote that would be the same two minutes. So think about how you can transition from what you were doing before to what you might do on the horizon when it comes to video as part of your strategy. Guys, thank you so much. Have a really great rest of your Tuesday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Thanks so much. Have a great day.